Yeah, I'd say clearly, clearly that's not our best effort. Um, I, I wasn't happy with it. I would definitely say that. Uh, we have higher standards. I expect better than that for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I would say that there's a lot to it, obviously. You know, I thought that there were some things that we did really well. I would say it's a good game for a critic. I mean, if you want to look at the stat sheet at the end of the game and say, wow, they really netted well on punt, and then you look at, well, their first two punts, they netted 35 yards and 45 yards. I think we had them at 37. And then their third punt, they mishit the ball, didn't go where they wanted it to. It hit at 38 yards. Their gunner was in the way of us catching it and rolled for 20 more. And so they net 58 on the play, and then their net's real good at the end of the day. So if you just look at that, or drive start, for example, we kicked off, and our kickoff coverage did an outstanding job all game long. I think we had them at the like 21-yard line. They had us at the 21-yard line. Their kick cover did a great job. But what happens on our drive start is we kicked out from the 21 time. And so now all of a sudden the drive start number comes up, and everyone says, well, you guys didn't cover the ball very well. Well, we actually did. Um, so I would say there's a handful of things like that. Now, if you're talking about the field goals, we obviously expect to make those. I expect to make those. We had a 48-yarder and a 54-yarder. Um, those are clearly makeable kicks. They're indoors in good situations. So I would say, yeah, no question. And then punting the football, uh, I thought we protected the punter great. We did a lot of good things there. We just didn't punt the ball great. Obviously, we got a great punter. The guys. Uh, what uh, two weeks ago or a week ago they're saying this guy's been the best punter in the National Football League in his first 120 punts and you know he goes out there and he has two punts that weren't great the first punt was obviously good uh, knocked him down inside the 20 right there at the end of the half and then he comes back with two punts that were not really up to his standard um, and so it affects the whole group and then you look at those that net there and it's you know obviously not a great net at the end of the day so I would say it's probably a mix of a lot of different things it certainly wasn't up to our standard it's definitely not up to mine um, we have a high standard um, but anyway that's kind of the way the game goes sometimes and uh, I would say we're excited about playing this week. It's another good good team. Uh, I said that a week ago. I thought those guys are a good outfit that we played against. We play with another group that plays with a lot of energy. Got a good bunch of good special teams players there. I got a lot of respect for. So it should be fun. Yeah, so I, I would say it's a really good question because I think what happens, it's like, you know, sometimes those things get, those numbers get magnified by the number of kicks that they've hit in game situations. Some guys have had them, some guys haven't had them, some guys have had more than others. Some guys have had more than the other, others because they have a really big leg. There's other guys who never kick them, so their numbers, you know, they kick one or two, it was a 51 yarder, not a 58. And they made the 51 yarder, and so their 50 plus numbers are really good, but, uh, so I would say you have to look deeper into all that stuff. But to your point, the question is really good. Um, I would say that in my experience doing this, I've done it for a while, I would say that usually these guys trend to what they do on the practice field. So if a guy's hitting 70%, 50 plus on the practice field, and he's hitting 50 in games, I would say if you just push that out and play another 15 years or 10 years, it's going to trend towards the 70. Now, it's not necessarily going to be perfect. And maybe there is something there. Um, with any given pr player that is, it won't trend that way. Maybe there is something going on, um, either mentally or physically or whatever, that would prohibit that from happening, um, which you can't really answer. But I would say, in, in my experience, usually it trends towards what you see in practice. And we have a lot more information from practice than obviously we get out there in a game. I'm not going to tell you all that stuff. I know you'd love to know, uh, but <laughs> no. Uh, but the bottom line is the guy. I would say he's very comparable to most guys in the National Football League. I'll just say it that. And I think if you look at the average in the National Football League, that's really not the average because, like I said, there's some guys who hit a lot of those, or some guys who don't hit any because they can't hit them. You know what I mean? So a lot of times the guys who are hitting them are also guys who have a better chance to make them. The guys who aren't hitting them, even though their percentage could be higher they might not have as good of a chance to hit them.
Yeah, I would say this. Uh, I would say this. Firstly, I think the information that we got back um, from him is is really good information. So we're excited about that with Austin. Um, I know he didn't practice the other day, but uh, anyway. So I, I I feel good about where he's at and what will happen with him. Now that being said, I would say that we do have Everly on the practice squad. He's been great. I mean, he had an outstanding workout when we brought him in here, um, and we're really excited about that. He's obviously been a guy who's bounced around the league a little bit, um, you know. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But I would say his performance out there for us has been really good. Um, and I would say, you know, like this week's a good example. We play against a guy, Myers, their kicker, um, and he's a great story. He goes, he's in the Arena Football League. He's on two different teams. Then he goes to uh, Jacksonville, I think. And this goes back to the 50 plus kicks. I think he hit like 12 50 plus yard kicks in Jacksonville his first year. He was 7 of 12. His numbers didn't look good at the end of the season. I think he missed a couple short kicks, but it's really magnified by the long kicks. His overall percentage, he ends up getting cut by those guys. He goes to Seattle, he gets cut by Seattle. He goes to the New York Jets, and he goes to the Pro Bowl his first year with the Jets. Then he gets released by them, now he's back in Seattle. So I would say with all these guys, if it comes to Everly, maybe this is shot and he turns into being a great player. Um, I, I, I believe that could happen for him, and I hope it does if he gets that opportunity. I would never say that. Uh, I don't think. I think in this game, if you're looking for excuses, honestly, as a coach, a player, anybody, if you're looking for them, you can find a million of them. And I think really that's true with life. You know, if you're you're a person looking for reasons why you are where you are, things aren't going your way, you're going to find them a million different ways. And there's no better way to do that than in this game. Um, but I would say he felt great. He's he's felt. I mean, I don't know that he's felt perfect, but I, I would say he's felt fine. His leg strength's not a problem. You can see it on his kickoffs. He's hit the ball well. So I would definitely not say that there was anything to that for sure. Love it. Yeah, I would, I, would, I would say the same thing. I would never, ever go there. Um, I just wouldn't provide that for myself because I think if you do, then you're done. I mean, you're not going to do anything. I say, you know, really, there's two groups of people. There's there's people that sit over here and they complain why, you know, the world's not, not right and everything's not going their way and they never get the break and all that stuff. And then there's the optimist out there. Um, and I believe in being, you know, the optimistic person that believes that you control your fate and uh, destiny, and I, I would never, ever allow something like that to be the reason why I didn't perform. Um, third group. Oh, there's a, yeah, the third group. <laughs> we got them in here. Uh, <laughs> Say that again. Yeah, and I think, you know, gosh, man, when you're hitting a ball 54 yards and you got to make it through the uprights, uh, you have to hit a perfect ball. And uh, at the end of the day, if you're off just a little bit, up, down, left, right, and your uh, foot hits the ground just a touch, whatever that may be, there's a lot of different things that go into those plays. How long the ball's on the ground, how much time he has to see it, there's just so much. Um, you know, the laces, the laces weren't perfect. The, the holder did a great job of getting around. You know what I mean? Like. Um, I would say this, we just missed it, you know. I, I wish it was a better answer than that, but. That's it, that, that would be another one of those things, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, Yeah, I, I would say in that stadium, uh, in that stadium on that day, that that was absolutely no factor, um, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I would just say it like that. I think I, I would say this. I always tell these guys, um, and I tell myself. You're not getting paid in this league as a coach or a player to do the easy things. You're getting paid to do the hard things. If you're a wide receiver, you're getting paid to go over the top of somebody and catch the ball. The, the catch where you're wide open, like everybody can make those. The guy at high school can make them, college can make them, all that. Uh, same thing with the kicker. I mean, if everything's perfect and you can make the kick, that's great. But so can everybody else out there doing it. You know, you got to be able to make it when everything's not perfect and everything doesn't go your way. Um, and that's how I feel as a player, a coach, person in life.